cleaning the minimat, minimatic air gap, and what we'll have to do, we cannot flush it back into the line, so we'll valve it out. We'll relieve the pressure on it. Uh, once again, there's no lead off, so we just kind of rock it back and forth, make sure there's no pressure. We'll haul it up to the top of the station. Uh, we'll remove the lid, and if it's greased up, then the internal components can't be those out and then scrape the grease off the inside and then reinstall it. impact the work on this. Pack solid. This sure does seem like a lot of a hassle though, just to... We've got uh, 16, 16 bolts so far, and we have to dispose of the grease because it won't go, can't push it back down in the line. Now we have to scrape it off the insides, uh, melt the grease out. Pleasant job dealing with the grease. This is really best case scenario for these to be able to just drop that out like that. Uh, there's the amount of grease that stays in there that is just bound up. And when it's bound up, we don't believe it's operating. Process to dispose of all the all the grease in a public public way. back in the hole and reattach it and tighten everything up and then valve it in and 
change the ARI. Now, would you guys have to still do the confined space entry for the ARI to this degree? Uh, not if we hook up the, the, the flush water and extend that up to here. You could actually have one person come, blast it through, but uh, then maybe every every six months, possibly every quarter, just do a visual inspection. In addition to in addition to actually the cleaning, how long does it take you to get all ready for confined space entry? It's probably about 15 minutes and then two, uh, two people are required. So it slows your job down a little bit. Alrighty. So you're looking at 25 minutes? Yeah. Without the confined space prep? We're going to do the maintenance on the ARF. ARI air gap, and uh, what we'll be doing, since we don't have the flushing system set up, we'll remove the bolts, pull the cap off after we valve the unit out, and bleed it off, make sure there's no pressure, and then the cap and the plunger assembly will come off, and we can do the inspection um, in the in the vault without having to come up and remove any grease. I guess the volume of H2S wasn't as much in that one as it was the other one, huh? Not nearly. Our, our detector didn't go off. Yeah. We were at up to 24 parts on the Venomatic, and I believe we're about two parts. Four or three quarter inch bolts holding the cap on. So to inspect the ARI, that was four bolts versus uh, 16 on the Venomatic. We can do it down in the vault. There's not a large grease uh, amount of grease to deal with. stuck on the walls. No, there's a little just right here that I think got was on the float and it caught on the edge, but down inside it's clean. And you can see on the operating portion of the float it's dry. No grease has gotten there. Uh, that's about it on this. Make sure the top's clean. Okay, in this air vault, uh, we have an APCO, and we switched to a Venomatic on half of it to try out, and now we're going to switch from the Venomatics to the ARIs on both, both sides. So what was the reason why you switched from the APCOs? The APCOs, as you can see, it's a combination unit, but there's two actual air gap pieces and they weigh probably 150 pounds together. It was, uh, it was extremely difficult to disassemble them and the Venomatics were the newer, newer device but then after using those uh, there was still disassembly required more so than on the ARI. How often would you have to service the APCOs? The APCOs were supposed to be done at the stations with a lot of grease uh, monthly and you had no choice but to dump the grease back.